Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to our press conference this morning. I'm going to be real brief. Today we have with us the FBI Special Agent in Charge, Stephen Anthony, U.S. Attorney Justin Herdman, and Chief Calvin Williams from Cleveland Police Division that will be speaking today at the press conference. Also present we have Cuyahoga County Sheriff Cliff Pickney, Hector Feliciano, ASAC of Homeland Security, Mark Gollin, Assistant Field Office Director of ICE, Drew Deserto, Chief from the U.S. Marshal's Office, Superintendent Colonel Paul Pride from the Ohio State Highway Patrol, Lieutenant Commander Norma Smehal from U.S. Coast Guard, Chief Bob Wagner and Detective Chuck Foriato from North Olmstead Police, and members of our investigative team from the Joint Terrorism Task Force. We have many other members on our Joint Terrorism Task Force that were not able to be here today, and we thank them for their participation. I'll turn it over to Steve Anthony. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Um, as Vicki said, my name is Steve Anthony. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the Cleveland FBI. I'd just like to echo what Vicki said and thank all the partners for being here today, and of course recognize those that were not able to make this on short notice. The reason the Joint Terrorism Task Force works is because all the people to my left and right, and we are forever grateful. We're here today to announce the arrest of Demetrius Nathaniel Pitts, also known as Abdur Rahim Rafiq. Pitts has been charged in a federal complaint with attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. Pitts was, Pitts was placed into custody yesterday, Sunday, July 1st at approximately 10 a.m by the Joint Terrorism Task Force agents and task force officers. The criminal complaint sets forth in detail the facts and circumstances of the investigation and also the attempted material support charge. If, that, if you have not received a copy of that complaint, you will so at the end of the press conference. So again, that 30 plus page complaint uh, includes a lot of the details of this investigation, but I think it's important to just spend a few minutes and to go over some of the highlights for you. So in 2017, the FBI received reporting that Pitts was making statements espousing his support for Al-Qaeda and also his actions against particular United States entities, his violent intentions, including the armed forces. And as we typically do when we receive this information, we do what? We open an investigation. We check it out. And that's exactly what we did here. It was initially opened out of our Cincinnati field office because Pitts resided in the Southern District of Ohio and was also worked in coordination with the United States Attorney's Office in the Southern District of Ohio. So Pitt's statements of violent intentions continue to cause concern during the investigation as he was expressed a willingness to conduct a U.S.-based attack and also his desire in wanting to join a foreign terrorist organization. His Facebook posts, quite frankly, were disturbing. They included verbiage that had words to the effect, we as Muslim need to start training like this every day. We need to know how to shoot guns, throw hand grenades, hand-to-hand -hand combat. An FBI undercover agent was introduced to Pitts in an effort to further determine whether Pitts was in fact a threat to national security. His extensive criminal history, including felonious assault, domestic violence, aggravated robbery, and carrying a concealed weapon furthered our reason for concern. In May, Pitts relocated to the Cleveland area, and the office here in the JTTF picked up the investigation. Over the next several weeks, Pitts continued to express his radical ideology and his desire to commit violence against the United States. Just last week, during an in-person meeting with our undercover agent, Pitts suggested words to the effect, I did tell myself that their, their holiday is coming up the 4th of July, Independence Day, what would, what would hit them in the core? Blow up, have a bomb, blow up at the 4th of July parade. During communications with the undercover agent, Pitts indicated he would travel downtown and conduct reconnaissance of Voinovich Park and the U.S. Coast Guard Station for the purpose of taking photographs and videotape footage. He further the day or thereafter, walked downtown, all over the downtown, and surveilled these, area, these entities, one of which park and the U.S. Coast Guard Station, in addition to other locations that had previously been discussed. 
additional conversations with extremely concerning statements of intentions made by, made by Pitts are specified in the federal complaint. And they include topics such as hatred for the military, wanting to chop off heads and hands and disposing of bodies. A final meeting occurred on Sunday morning, as I mentioned yesterday, where the undercover and Mr. Pitts had a lengthy conversation. Pitts again, on his own, expressed his allegiance to Al Qaeda, his desire to participate in a terror attack on July 4th in Cleveland, Ohio, his desire to kill military personnel and their families, his desire to kill federal and local agents, and his desire to commit a future attack at a date to be determined in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, an area he once resided. At the conclusion of the meeting, Mr. Pitts was arrested, and he will be appearing before a U.S. magistrate later today. I think everyone in the room knows this, but this case illustrates that law enforcement, of course, cannot sit back, in this case, wait for Mr. Pitts to commit a violent act. We don't have the luxury of hoping that an individual decides not to harm someone or get others to act, especially when his continued repeated intentions were to do just that. The Joint Terrorism Task Force, the city, the partners are working every day to detect, deter, and prevent terrorist attacks. That is by far our collective number one priority to keep the public safe from all known threats. So I would like just to take a minute to commend the men and women and some of which are represented over there. And again, there's many in this room behind the cameras. They're every bit as critical to the work we do each and every day. We also had assistance from the Maple Heights and Garfield Heights Police Department and other, of course, eight and other entities. Just their hard work, dogged determination throughout the last year and a half. And it's what they do each and every day behind the scenes to try to protect us all. This investigation also, we collectively believe, demonstrates that commitment, but also underscores the importance of differentiating between lawful, peaceful exercise of First Amendment rights, rights that we all ch cherish, and criminal acts and violent desires of a select few, such as Mr. Pitts, who seek to do our community and our country harm. Lastly, I would just like to give a shout out and thank the public. The public, as you'll see in the complaint, provided at least a piece of information that furthered this investigation. It just further illustrates how critical that is. All the partners up here, I, I know Chief Williams would echo this in a second, and Colonel Pride and others, it is the relationship with the public that's relying on inf information each and every day that allows us to do our job. I think this case also illustrates that partnership, not just among the agencies here, but between the public and between the media as well. With that, I will, I will, I will end it, and I'm going to turn it over to our United States Attorney, Mr. Justin Herman. Justin? Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Steve, and, and I, I want to echo what Steve just said. A, a huge thanks to all the men and women on Cleveland's Joint Terrorism Task Force, uh, and the men and women of our office, too, uh, who work around the clock uh, make sure our nation, our city, and our community are safe from threats like Demetrius Pitts. Pitts uh, has been charged in federal court with one count of attempting to provide material support to a designated foreign terrorist organization, and in this case, it's Al-Qaeda. The statutory maximum sentence for that charge is 20 years in prison. We will be presenting our evidence to the grand jury seeking an indictment against Mr. Pitts. Uh, as uh, Mr. Anthony mentioned, there will be a complaint affidavit provided uh, to the public and will be filed with the court. But as detailed in that affidavit, just last week, this defendant was walking around downtown Cleveland conducting reconnaissance on what he thought was a large-scale attack planned for the 4th of July. He looked for locations to park a van that would be packed with explosives. He talked about taking uh, targets like St. John's Cathedral off the map, and just yesterday he discussed giving remote control cars packed with explosives and shrapnel to the children of our military uniform members. When asked about the carnage that this would cause, Pitts said comments like, I don't care, and I have no regrets. As I mentioned, many people worked around the clock on this case uh, over the weekend and over the past several weeks uh, in order to ensure that the public would be safe. 
Now, in less than two hours, uh, Steve and I will be in Mentor, and we're going to be there for the funeral of a husband, a father, and a police officer who was killed in the line of duty. And in just two days, Americans will gather with friends and family, probably over backyard barbecues, to celebrate our nation's birthday. And I bring both of those things up because they both acknowledge an observance of what our nation represents, both in principle and in practice. This defendant, by his own words and by his own deeds, wanted to attack our nation and its ideals. He wanted to target, even initially, from the very, very beginning of this, people at a July 4th parade. And he also talked about wanting to target people watching fireworks over downtown Cleveland, right outside this building. But he also wanted to strike at the values that are at the very core of our nation. He wanted us to be afraid to speak our minds. He also wanted us to be afraid to gather together in public places. So I ask this week that we all continue to gather, continue to celebrate America, continue to celebrate our men and women in law enforcement, to acknowledge those who have given their lives in the line of duty, to engage in the exchange of ideas that is central to our democracy, to continue to have our barbecues and continue to go see fireworks, knowing that our police, our sheriff's department, and our justice department employees will remain vigilant in protecting our community. Thank you. Turn over to Chief Williams now. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I want to start off by uh, thanking uh, Special Agent in Charge Stephen Anthony of the FBI here in Cleveland and uh, U.S. Attorney Herdman. As they uh, stated, uh, an incident like this um, doesn't um, get resolved uh, in silos. Our partnerships are very important here in Northeast Ohio, as you can see by the people represented here on the stage. And we continue to foster those partnerships and, and to get the word out to people to let us know when things are happening. Uh, on behalf of Mayor Jackson, I definitely want to thank Steve Anthony, the members of the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force. Uh, a lot of them uh, aren't here today, but um, their work does not go unnoticed. Uh, definitely our partners that you see here standing today. Uh, but I also want to talk uh, to our communities out there, because as Steve stated, you know, you don't uh, solve these things alone. Uh, you definitely need the public's help. You definitely need our vigilance. And we're just starting summer here. And this isn't, uh, you know, the, the first holiday that happens over the summer. So we need to make sure that we stay vigilant. We need to make sure that we keep our eyes and ears open. Law enforcement is gonna be out there this summer. We're gonna be at every major event. We're gonna be out there day in and day out for our community. So if you see something, definitely say something. Uh, notify a law enforcement officer, uh, notify somebody that can actually respond and check it out. It may be nothing, but it may be something. Uh, this thing started with a person that uh, started talking online about what he wanted to do. And uh, it escalated into what you have today. So our community definitely needs to stay vigilant. We need to make sure that um, we keep each other safe. We need to keep our plans up. We need to keep our intelligence gathering up because those that seek to do us harm are doing exactly the same thing. So we have to stay vigilant. Uh, again, I wanna thank our partners. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Steve and his folks here. They do an excellent job here in Northeast Ohio for us and they're definitely to be commended on this operation. Thank you. Any questions? Steve, do we have access to explosives and do we know if he has the capability to blow up the building? He, I, I will say this, and I'll let the complaint speak for itself, but the trick with these things is we only know what we know, right? What we're able to do as an investigative team, coming together to try to determine, again, his intent, his ability to execute and the like. And uh, so we don't know fully. Uh, quite honestly, you know, whether he had all of these abilities. He definitely, throughout many conversations and over a long period of time, expressed his ability to either use, either through, through the undercover agent or through others to obtain that. So his intent and his, and his desire to find someone that could do that, if he could not, remain clear throughout. Um, his precise ability to do specific things, again, we may, we may never know. I will say that we didn't have specific information that he had a past past uh, history of being able to do that. Uh, Steve, do you, um, have you guys searched his phone, NSO, places like that? Uh, we, as, 
you can imagine, and I can let J Justin speak to that if he wants to, but we're, we're conducting all logical investigation. I'm not gonna, not gonna speak to actually specific you know, things that we're doing, investigative steps that we're taking to help, to help resolve this entire case. Yeah, we, we I, again, as Steve said, I, I don't think we wanna get into specific investigative steps that have been taken or, or not taken at this point in time, but suffice it to say that um, uh, it did not stop with the arrest of, of Mr. Pitts. We've done everything we can to complete the investigation. What we have is throughout the investigation is his re repeated desire to join, to be part of a foreign terrorist uh, organization, specifically Al Qaeda. So his intent was to be part of, part of what they do, part of the organization. And again, it, some of the complaint talks about that in details. Um, again, that was, his, that was his stated desire to be part of a foreign terrorist organization. That's why, as Mr. Hermit would say, charge of attempting to provide material support to such organization uh, is, is, be able to be, is able to be charged because of his repeated desire, stated desire to want to be part of and recognized as part of Al-Qaeda. Well, at this time, um, Mr. Pitts is, is the person being charged. Let me answer your first part of the question is, Mr. Pitts is a United States citizen. And again, this, this case is a stark reminder that it doesn't take an individual that even born here or foreign to go, to, a foreign, to go over to a foreign land and participate in, in some, sort of, some sort of engagement to come back here ready to commit act. This is a, Mr. Pitts is a United States citizen, radicalized in the United States, wanting to commit, planning to commit a terrorist attack in the United States. Uh, as far as the efforts that the United States government makes to vet all people that come to the country, uh, of course, you know, we, we do just that. I don't know if Justin wants to comment on that, but I mean, to suggest, I don't know if your question suggests that doesn't happen, um, I, don't, I don't think I would agree with the premise of your question. And again, quite frankly, for this discussion, it, it may be irrelevant because Mr. Pitts was a United States citizen. Do uh, do not have any information that he traveled out of the country. As you can imagine, as Mr. Herman said, the investigation is continuing just to determine all that. Again, there's a lot of work still to be done. And so I can't, I can't comment that I don't have that information. Anything else? Uh, Chief, any plans for increased security on the 4th of July? Um, yes and no. I mean, we always increase our security postures during special events, whether it's the 4th of July, St. Patrick's Day, you name it. Uh, and, and you know, you folks have been out there uh, during those events, so you see the level of security. Uh, but does this heighten everybody's sense of awareness of, of what's going on? Of course it does. Um, but are we putting out extra, extra patrols? Uh, not, nece not necessarily, but uh, we always have what we feel to be a um, more than adequate security plan uh, for our special events. Uh, Fourth of July is no different. And uh, you'll definitely know that we're out there. And then there are some folks out there that you won't know are out there. So uh, we're going to have our same posture. We just want people to be vigilant. We want people to help us out. If you see something, definitely let law enforcement know so we can check it out. Thanks. Anything else? All right, if not, thank you very much again for being here. We'll make sure that when you leave here today that you get a copy of the, uh, of the complaint, correct? All right. Can I speak to the Oh, sorry. Yes. Thanks, everyone. His mug shot's on the screen if you guys want to capture that. Thank you.